are these people? So last week we talked about how um, Israel's latest raid resulted in uh, the rescue of four hostages at the cost of over 270 Palestinians who were killed. Um, and since then, I saw on Twitter and other channels of the idea that the U.S. military was involved uh, in that attack. Well, um, we have, I will say, confirmation um, from Robert Inklakesh. Inc in Inklakesh. In in Lakesh. In Lakesh. Yep. There we go. Um, that, that guy. In yeah. Lakesh. So, so he wrote uh, an investigative piece in Mimpress that Consortium News picked up. Yep. Where he writes, U.S. involved in Israeli massacre of 274 Palestinians. Uh, Robert Inklakesh goes over press evidence countering U.S. government denials that its forces were directly involved in Israel's deadly operation in Gaza's Nuzerat refugee camp. So, yeah. catch up. So, he continues, Officials in Washington praised mil Israel's military operation that freed four Israeli captives from the Gaza Strip, but refrained from commenting on the approximately 274 Palestinians killed during the mission, which involved U.S. collaboration. While Israelis celebrated the extraction of the captives from Gaza's Nuzerat, Palestinian refugees in the area were left to collect the remains of their loved ones. An eyewitness described seeing mangled bodies of men, women, and children strewn around the marketplace and a mosque, while a paramedic likened the scene to a horror movie. A headline in the Washington Post read, For Israel, a rare day of joy amid bloodshed as four hostages are rescued alive, referring to the event that resulted in the deaths of 274 Palestinians and hundreds of others wounded. Meanwhile, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan praised the operation as daring, and President Joe Biden expressed his joy over the rescue without addressing what was one of the largest civilian massacres in Gaza since October. Are you fucking during kidding Israeli me? <laughs> Thanks, Indy. Um, during the Israeli military operation which successfully extracted four captives, three others were reportedly killed, including a U.S. citizen, according to a statement from Hamas. Shortly after, information surfaced that the U.S. had played a significant role in the operation, which was hailed as a great success. A New, York Times article, a New York Times article reported that a team of American hostage recovery officials stationed in Israel assisted the Israeli military's effort to rescue the four captives by providing intelligence and other logistical support. Another report from Axios cited an unnamed U.S. official claiming that a U.S. hostage cell in Israel supported the effort to rescue the four hostages, but he did not provide details on the support provided. Compounding issues for the American government, a video seemingly filled by Israeli soldiers was widely shared on social media, showing a helicopter taking off next to a U.S.-built temporary pier meant to facilitate the transfer of much-needed aid to Gaza. The aircraft was used in Israel's military operation to transport the four freed slaves. Captain, yeah. sorry. Slaves. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Captain. You're stuck on Juneteenth talk. I'm stuck on Juneteenth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, U.S. Central Command Centric Centcom quickly released a statement on the issue claiming... The humanitarian peer facility, including its equipment, personnel, and assets, was not used in the operation to rescue hostages today in Gaza. An area south of the facility was used by the Israelis to safely return the hostages to Israel. Any such claim to the contrary is false. Is However, it? contrary... What's that? I was just, is it? I'd press X yeah. for doubt. <laughs> yeah. However, contra contrary to the spirit of CENTCOM's statement, the video of the helicopter used to evacuate the Israeli captives show it clearly next to the pier. The vehicles used to transfer the four release detainees likely used a nearby causeway attached to the pier. Following further denial from the U.S. government that its forces were directly involved, the Pentagon released a statement describing the area used by the helicopter as near the pier. 
Yeah, this like contradicts 50 feet away. From, <laughs> this contradicts reports from the New York Times, Axios, and CBS, which cited American officials claiming that U.S. and U.K. intelligence information was used by Israel to conduct a military operation. Yep. Additional supports indicate that U.S. operated drones were used for surveillance to support the operation. While there are no allegations that U.S. forces were on the ground or participated in armed action, they were clearly involved in other ways. Well, we, I have something that might <laughs> probably or likely defutes that. Okay. Um, despite Washington's insistence on innocence, the U.N. World Food Program remained unconvinced that the close proximity of the Israeli-operated aircraft did not imply the peers used in the military operation. WFP Executive Director Cindy McCain announced the organization had paused its planned distribution of aid from the peer due to security concerns from its staff. This decision came after two of its sites were attacked during the Nusrat massacre. The U.S. built tempor temporary peer was initially estimated to cost American taxpayers $320 million. Contributions from the United Kingdom and lower rates from, for contractors allegedly reduced that figure to $230 million. However, the pier suffered damage after U.S. forces failed to account for sea conditions, adding another $22 million in damages to the bill. Okay. The U.S. only, the US only managed to reconnect the floating pier to Gaza on June 7th, less than a day before the Israeli military operation. This has sparked speculation about the true intent of the pier, as it's only operable in conditions with waves smaller than 1.25 meters, and has delivered minimal aid for such a costly project. Mm. So we've actually talked about this before in terms of, you know, um, like how the this pier was built and kind of shoddy at that, yeah. and what its real intentions were. Uh, I think given the size of the pier and all that, um, and now I, I guess the pier has essentially sunk. Well, it did, and into... then they rebuilt a floating pier. They shoved a floating pier up to the same spot, you know, right. literally days before this operation. So one that can only be operated in ways less than, you know, a meter pretty much, like, right. which is and... not that much. That's and given the size, scene. that doesn't indicate aid, you know, no. that will be able to kind of come in on that, on the current pier that's there now. So, yeah. so the question is, what is that pier really for? Um, yeah. So, speaking of defeating the U.S. claims, um, fortunately, I had this saved for maybe about a week or two. Mm. So Jeremy Lafredo uh, tweeted, a young boy from Al Nusrat explains that the soldiers who raided his family home, extinguished a cigar on his neck, and killed his 12-year-old brother were not military, Israeli military. They were American special, this is the child, yeah. they were American special forces. Those who attacked us in our home were not Israeli forces. They were American. And Biden, the guy who talks about humanitarian aid and who built the pier, is bringing tanks through the pier, and the person who killed my brother is one of them from Biden's army. So obviously he's Palestinian. So, but the, you can play the video there underneath. There are some titles, so you may want to zoom out. Yeah. The days. Oh, let's start over because I have to read it. The days started normally until around ten in the morning. Then the helicopters came. Maybe seven, six or seven of them. They started firing everywhere around New Zealand. After the firing, we found a truck that had parked by our house door. We saw a group of special forces, American special forces. We stayed in the house, we sat in our room, and then we heard the sound of approaching tanks. Did they interview it? Did they talk to you, the soldiers? What happened? We saw them from afar. After getting in the house, we heard the sounds of tanks. We said, God save us. Then we heard their voices coming up the stairs. They broke everything on the bottom floor and then got up to the second floor. First thing they did when they entered was to shoot at us. They shot my brother Moim here and in his belly near the kidney. 
I saw him. Then he shot me in the finger and God saved me because the bullet ricocheted towards my aunt. After the bullet hit my finger, it got my aunt. After that, he shot my younger brother and he died. God rest his soul. Yemen. He was 12. He bled for about a quarter of an hour on the mattress. Afterwards, he took my grandfather and Rab and father. They blindfolded them and then he wanted to kill me, but my mom told them I'm young. To check I'm, that I'm young, he undressed me. Once he checked, he took me to the living room. In the living room, he punched me twice here in the face, and then he laid me down and blindfolded me. After he blindfolded me, he told me to put my hands on my back. I put my hands back, but tried to resist when they... Um, so he put you there. Oh, so yeah. And press so down. he put his shoe there and press down so I quiet down so I stop making noises. Those who attacked us in the house were not Israeli forces. They were American forces. And Biden, the guy who talks about humanitarian aid and who built the pier, is bringing tax through the pier. And the person who killed us, killed my brother and shot my other brother, was American from Biden's army. One of them put out their cigarettes here on his neck. He was smoking on the sofa while I was tied and then put it out there. That's what happened. My name is Ahmed, Ahmad Mohammed Kabul Matar. Kabul Matar, yep. Cool. Um, dude, what? Like, first of all, the way he talks about both his aunt and brother dying with like zero emotion you know yeah. like just shows how like hardened these people are to tragedy at this point you know mm -hmm. and then on top of that to just first they undressed him to see if he was young what the fuck huh right like right The fuck's up with that? That's weird as shit. Don't be doing that. Like. Anyway. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, I, 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 you can figure out for yourself what they meant by that. But yeah, um, I, it just honestly, I hate saying this, but it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. For Ahmed. You know, like. I'm not going to say here because YouTube, but you can fill in the gaps as to what they could, could probably could have done with him if they wanted to, yeah. uh, but didn't, thank God. Um, but, and I thought about this, this is probably, and we can only speculate, but this is what I believe Aaron Bushnell yeah. Uh, the person, like we talked about him, who, you know, self immolated himself uh, back in February. Um, this was probably the stuff that he probably knew was going to happen. Yeah. That he had wanted no part of it. And, and that's why he took that extreme act of protest against that. Um, because basically, when you're in the military, you cannot speak out against injustices like these. Like, so it's, it was his way of probably kind of, I would argue his protest, but in a way warning people in terms of we are going to get involved, watch. And given, and like, I'm going to take the account of this little boy to heart, you know, because this is all that pretty much we, we were getting right now in terms of, you know, U.S. troops being there. And we talked about, you know, last week how there are um, British-Israeli troops who are fighting in Israel right now. So it doesn't make, it makes sense to me if, you know, the Br British, British Israelis are fighting in the IDF, who's this, why is to say that um, American troops would not be fighting there as well? Well, the so, issue is we, we already know that American 
uh, mercenaries are over there, just like British mercenaries are over there. The issue is, is if right. active, active, uh, American military are there under order. Well, but in terms of, right, in terms of using the pier, which mm -hmm. again would be essentially a war crime. So, yes. um, so again, it's like, so of course they're gonna, America is gonna keep quiet about this because they don't oh, want sure. that smoke. So, yeah. but again, the fact that, you know, which is why mainstream media is not gonna touch this. Um, I did see some, I, I, I don't wanna give him credit, I do, I believe Kyle Kalinske did report on this maybe a week or two ago, but, you know, the idea that even with this story it hasn't gone any sort of traction at all, um, we can guess why, but, yeah. you know, given that America is kind of put on blast already, you would think that there would be more noise about it, and there hasn't been. No, well, there they're taking the shaggy approach, so you know, wasn't me, right? But um, yeah, even though we definitely caught them on camera. She even caught me on camera. Um, anyway, Ugh. but yeah, I mean, it's such a disappointing story and a horrific story. Um, yeah. I hate to kind of talking about that, but. Um, but that being said, that's why we're demonetized because we talk stories like this that other people probably will not. So please support us, uh, since YouTube is not helping us, but we don't rely on them. We rely on you, faithful viewers and our fam, uh, to support the channel. So if you want to give us, uh, so support financially, feel free to scan the QR code with your phone or go to that link that you see at the bottom of your screen. Um, to support us on Kofi, um, if you want to give financially, but that, but more importantly, please, 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 um, like, share, and subscribe. We are heavily suppressed on YouTube. Um, although I still don't understand why certain clips of ours do well and most do not, but whatever. Yeah. Um, and make sure you leave a comment um, on on this stream or any of our clips that we put up, we do read them and often we do get some ideas uh, in terms of what we should talk about from your comments. So continue doing that. That definitely helps us get ideas of stories to cover and help us get to 2K. We are currently six people away from hitting that goal. We've been like hovering around 2K for a minute. So please get us over the edge where we're able to get 2K or surpass that. Maybe so please whatever. Yeah. So please subscribe uh, and help us get that goal. It's yeah. We've been hovering around this lot yep. thousand for like a minute, like. Mm -hmm. Like our first thousand took a lot shorter time than this thousand. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh. But.